This is a tweet that has now been put out by Greta Thunberg, uh, where she says, and I quote, freedom of speech and the right to peaceful protest and assembly are non-negotiable human rights. This must be a fundamental part of any democracy. Hashtag stand with Disha Ravi. Remember, as far as the Delhi police is concerned, Delhi police in its investigation has been pointing out that Disha Ravi happens to be a key character as far as this toolkit is concerned, which was essentially edited by Disha Ravi. In fact, what the Delhi police has been heavily relying on is also WhatsApp conversations that took place between Greta Thunberg and Disha herself with regards to the fact that Disha was basically telling Greta Thunberg to hold on to this particular toolkit because the kind of reaction that essentially came in the moment after she had basically put out the toolkit, there was a lot of backlash and she was fearing that perhaps UAPA could have been slapped. Now you have Greta Thunberg taking to Twitter saying that freedom of speech and the right to peaceful protest and assembly are non-negotiable. Let me go across to our senior executive editor Abhishek Kapoor who is joining us on the phone line. Abhishek, put this into perspective. Greta Thunberg now says that this is perhaps time to stand with Desha Ravi and freedom of expression somewhere down the line is now being flouted. Someone, you know, if you look at it, uh, till the hashtag, word for word, the tweet is right. The right to peaceful protest, assembly, they are non-negotiable human rights. But where Greta Thunberg hurts is in believing that Disha Ravi is in, 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 in jail or in police custody because of, uh, uh, you know, she was protesting because she was uh, making some kind of assembly. The fact of the matter is that Disha Ravi is in police custody or in jail or facing judicial process uh, and, uh, you know, process of law because she was seen to be conspiring. And she was aware of this fact because of which she in fact asked Greta Thunberg to delete the tweet in which she had uh, put out the, the toolkit. So in a way, perhaps Greta Thunberg is uh, returning the favor because uh, uh, Disha understood that what she's doing or what they are doing together is something which is beyond the pale of law because of which the law has caught up with her here. And it's likely that the long arms of the law might reach Greta Thunberg also. She's not a citizen of India, but then if she's part of some conspiracy, and if the conspiracy is large enough to warrant her questioning, maybe uh, some way could be found to reach her as well. Uh, we are told already that uh, she has been approached uh, in terms of asking for information. The point is that uh, she is misreading the process of law, and that's why taking the position that she is. Also, Abhishek, I just want to, you to quickly weigh on as far as the court proceedings that have essentially taken place and where does the Indian courts really stand on this particular matter? Well, uh, Shavan, we know that police had sought her custody. Uh, Disha Ravi was given custody for five days. Now she is in judicial custody pending uh, the questioning of two other accused whom Disha Ravi herself has named. So I think uh, the process of law is going on. As they say, uh, law is taking its course. Greta Thunberg is not a citizen of India. She has no right to comment on the process of law, of law in India. And as I said, Disha Ravi is facing this process because she was seen to be conspiring. In fact, uh, those protests did turn violent, uh, even if Disha Ravi was not part of those protests. Uh, so in that sense, the process of law would continue. Uh, I think the next stage would be when Disha Ravi would be confronted or questioned along with the two other accused she has named. And uh, then it will go forward from there. Well, thank you very much, uh, Abhishek, for putting this into perspective. But a quick recap of what we know so far, as far as the investigation that has been carried out by the Delhi police. Remember, there are two other people who have also been named as co-conspirators as far as this toolkit is concerned. There have been certain Zoom meetings that have actually taken place with organizations which are largely viewed as a Khalistani supporters. And not just that, there were meetings that took place in which Disha Ravi, along with the the other co-conspirators were basically part of this entire meeting. What was this toolkit all about? On the one hand, you've had uh, the co-conspirators of the toolkit uh, coming out and saying that this was nothing but just an attempt to basically support the farmers' uh, protests. But on the other hand, as far as Delhi police is concerned, they still maintain that this is the handiwork of the Khalistani sympathizers. 